Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this lab we're going to be taking a look at Open Shortest Path First, otherwise known as OSPF. Specifically within OSPF, I'm going to show you how to configure single area OSPF on a Juniper router. And in this example, we're going to also explain to you some of the basics of OSPF and how OSPF works on a broadcast multi-axis network type such as Ethernet. So in this lab, in the diagram, we have two routers, router 1 and router 3. Router 1 and 3 are connected to each other via their gig E001.0 interface. And these two routers are on the 13.13.13.0 slash 24 subnet. Router 1 has the dot 1 IP and router 3 has the dot 3 IP. Router 3 has also has a loopback 0.0, .0 interface with the 3.3.3.0/24 network and also the 3333.30/24 network. Router 1 also has a loopback 0.0, .0 interface as well with the 1.1.1.0/24 network and the 11.11.11.0/24 network. And it should be known that all the interfaces in this lab that we are going to be configuring are part of OSPF area 0. So real quickly what I'm going to do is just sum up some of the basics of OSPF running on a running on a broadcast multi-axis network. Within the broadcast multi-axis network type, we're going to see that there is a an election that takes place to so that all of the routers know which router is going to be designated as the designated router and also we're going to have the backup designated router and the point of these two routers within the broadcast multi-axis network type is so that say we had ten routers on a local network and they were all broadcasting their LSAs for OSPF and LSUs. Well that would take up a lot of bandwidth and what we're going to see with OSPF is that it is a very chatty protocol. There is a lot of LSAs and a lot of events happening between our OSPF neighbor adjacencies. So the whole concept of having a DR and BDR is that those 10 routers will synchronize their information with the DR and send updates to the DR. And likewise, the DR will send information to all the other routers that are not the DR. So in this case, the backup designated router is also used along with the designated router so that if the designated router is offline or goes down, the backup designated router will be able to come up and act as the designated router within a moment's notice. And all the routers in each area run what is called the SPF algorithm or the shortest path first algorithm and store a map of the network in what is called their link state database. And these link state databases are identical within each area. What we're also going to see is with OSPF area 0 is known as the backbone area and all other areas must connect directly to area 0. Unless of course you are using tunneling or creating what's called a virtual link. But in this lab, we're not going to look at connecting multiple areas to OSPF. We're going to just take a look at single area OSPF. I'm going to show you how to set up OSPF on Juniper routers. And we're going to take a look at setting up some trace options. If you're not familiar with trace options, you can watch my trace options lab where I show you how to set those up and how to, to look at the trace options. So we're going to do that. And within the trace options, I'm going to show you some key key events that are going to happen. I'm going to show you how the OSPF neighbor relationship forms and how the designated router and backup designated router get elected and what what key features the designated router has in order to get elected. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by configuring R, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and start by configuring R, R1. 
and let's go ahead and we'll just configure our interfaces first. So 